Now I know some of your favorite problems are the stoichiometry problems. And I know that it, it probably makes you a little sad that we're past the stoichiometry module. But don't fear, don't fret, don't cry. We see it again. We see it again in several places still yet this semester. Um, and here is the next example. Um, we see stoichiometry problems when we have solutions. Solution stoichiometry problems work just like stoichiometry problems did in the previous module. Of course, the key for a stoichiometry problem in the previous module was grams to moles, moles to moles, moles to grams. In the stoichiometry using solutions, though, what we're going to find is that sometimes instead of giving grams as our starting place, we'll have a solution. And other times, instead of wanting to find grams as our final answer, we might want to find something about our solution. And so we'll see problems that follow the pattern of solution to moles, moles to moles, moles to grams, maybe, or solution to moles, moles to moles, moles to something about the solution. Um, and then just to make it fun and interesting, sometimes we do start with grams, but we want to find out about the solution, so that would be a grams to moles, moles to moles, moles to solution. Um, the, the theory behind it is exactly the same. You have a moles to moles step. If you want to convert between any two chemical species, especially in a chemical reaction, you need to get, uh, go through moles. And recall that molarity is defined as moles per liter for the solution. And right there, smack dab on top, is your moles. So this is the moles from our solution that we will need to go through. In other words, we'll have moles in one of these two positions depending on what's given and what we're trying to find. So let's just jump in and do an actual problem. Calcium carbonate reacts with hydrobromic acid to form calcium bromide, carbon dioxide, and water according to the reaction below. What is the molarity of the hydrobromic acid? I want to know question mark molarity. I'm going to start pulling it out. If 250 milliliters of it, that's my hydrobromic acid solution, so that also goes with the HBr, reacts with 5.64 grams of calcium carbonate. That's this first guy, because of course you remember your nomenclature. So I have 5.64 grams of calcium carbonate. I'm trying to find out about my solution. And so over here, if we look at our pattern, I'm going to go grams to moles, moles to moles, and then I'll need to find a molarity for my solution at the end. Grams to moles, moles to moles, moles to molarity. Um, you can work this in three separate steps, or you can work it all at once. Um, it, the way I worked the problems in the previous module, I, I did it all at once. So I'm going to go ahead and start in doing this all at once. So if I have 5.64 grams of calcium carbonate, I have to change that to moles of calcium carbonate. And this is my first step. I do want to label my units just as completely as I can so that I don't get confused. I've got several chemical species here. I'll have grams of calcium carbonate on bottom to cancel, and moles of calcium carbonate on top. <coughs> This is the number that comes from the periodic table, so one mole of calcium carbonate equals 100.09 grams per mole. And I need to now change it from moles to moles, so now I need to go to moles of my question mark guy. This would be moles of HBr. I use the stoichiometry. This is 2 to 1. Now I can go ahead and take it the third step and find molarity, but I often find with solutions it helps me to think about them if I keep this molarity calculation separate. In other words, once I have moles, then I'll use it to find molarity. But I like kind of breaking the problem up into these parts. If you want to go ahead and find it all in one step, that's absolutely fine. So let me calculate moles of HBr. That's what I'll have at this point, And then we'll go from there. I want to be sure to keep at least an extra sig significant figure. I'm actually just going to keep this number on my calculator without clearing it out. And now I need to solve for molarity. The final question was, what is this molarity? The formula for molarity is molarity equals moles per liter. And so I'll put this value for moles. Again, it's on my calculator, so I don't have to retype it in. And I'll divide by the liters of solution. I was given 250 milliliters, and I'm probably getting pretty good at converting between milliliters and liters at this point, so that's 0.25 liters. And my final answer needs, what do we see, three sig figs. So let me re 
write my final answer to three sig figs. How about point four five one molarity? This is my HBR solution. So a stoichiometry problem that involves solutions is just like stoichiometry problems that you're so good at from the previous module. It's just that now on either end I might have a solution and the key there is that the formula for a solution is molarity equals moles per liter which of course gives me my moles that I can use in my moles to moles conversion. So you should practice a few of these. Um, a common way to ask a solution stoichiometry problem is by indicating that you're doing a titration and this is a common technique in the laboratory. You'll actually be doing an experiment of, over this. Alright, here is our question. In a titration, again this is a solution stoichiometry um, procedure. This is a, a procedure in the laboratory um, that you use, a titration. Uh, in this case, we're titrating a sample of sulfuric acid having a volume of 15 milliliters and it's requiring 36.42 milliliters of 0.147 molarity sodium hydroxide. So there's our reaction, sodium hydroxide and, and sulfuric acid. It requires that much solution for the complete neutralization because this is an acid and a base. This is a neutralization reaction. And the question is what is the molarity of H2SO4? first thing we have to do is we have to write that neutralization reaction. It is a double replacement reaction. It is H2SO4 plus NaOH. The products of this reaction is essentially what happens is the sodium ion hooks up with the sulfate ion. Since sodium is plus one and sulfate is minus two, I get Na2SO4. This will be an aqueous solution. And my other product is water. An acid plus a base yields a salt, which is an ionic compound, plus water. The water, you can think of it as forming from the OH, the hydroxide ion of the base, and the H plus, the hydrogen ion of the acid. Now, this isn't actually an ionic compound. Sulfuric acid is a covalent compound because these are all nonmetals. But acids have a particular behavior in water that makes them act like ionic compounds. And you'll learn more than you ever wanted to know about acids when you take Gen Chem 2. But for now, we can think of the H plus and the OH minus getting together to form our water. We do have to balance it. I'm going to start with sodiums. There's two sodiums, so I need two sodium hydroxides. There's only one sulfate ion. That's good. There, I'm going to keep my oxygens with the sulfate ion together, which means I just have this oxygen that I need to balance with water and there are two of them. That leaves me with four hydrogens and there are two hydrogens there and two hydrogens for my hydroxide. So now it's balanced. Let me write my information from the question. Um, a titration, a sample of H2SO4 having a volume of 15.00 milliliters, that's my H2SO4, required starting here, the 36.42 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide. That's all about my sodium hydroxide solution. So I'll write that here. And the question is, what is the molarity of the H2SO4? In this solution stoichiometry problem, I am given everything about the sodium hydroxide solution, and I am trying to find something about the sulfuric acid solution. So this is a solution to moles, moles to moles, moles to solution. My starting point and my ending point is the solution. So starting here with what is given, there is my solution to moles step. Now, what is that? Well, remember molarity is moles over liters, so moles is equal to molarity times liters. I'll multiply molarity times liters for sodium hydroxide to get my moles of sodium hydroxide. This answer has units of moles and I am talking about my sodium hydroxide, I should label it that way. And I want to be keeping at least one extra sig fig. I'm actually just going to keep this in on my calculator so I don't have to turn around and punch it back in. All right, that's my moles of sodium hydroxide. And so now I'm ready for my next step, which is moles to moles, starting with moles of sodium hydroxide that I just calculate. I'm trying to find something about my sulfuric acid, so I'll solve for moles of sulfuric acid. This is the stoichiometry step. I use the mole to mole ratio. Again, I have this number on my calculator, and so I don't have to punch it back in. I'm just going to hit divided by 2. 
Again, I want to keep an extra sig fig, but I'm just going to keep this on my calculator so I don't have to turn around and punch it back in. And now, finally, I am ready for my last step. I am trying to find out about the solution of sulfuric acid. I'm trying to find its molarity, and molarity is moles per liter, so I need the moles of sulfuric acid divided by the liters of sulfuric acid. I'm going to be grabbing this volume because I'm talking about sulfuric acid down here. And so, here we go. Again, I still have this number on my calculator, so I'm just going to divide by the 0.015 liters, and it looks like my answer needs to be in three sig figs, and so my answer is 0.178 molarity.